I am here with the man known as Gangrel. If you are at uh, WrestleMania this weekend, you can check him out at Title Match Wrestling's booth at WrestleCon. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out there uh, and, you know, hanging out with the title match guys, Telly and all them, um, doing a thing out there at WrestleCon. But, I mean, man, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm blessed. I'm busy with the wrestling school, busy every weekend. Can't, can't be any happier than that, luckier than that. <laughs> busy with the wrestling school, and you're still wrestling. I mean, I see your name popping up everywhere. Uh, ASW, uh, WCWC, I've seen it at AWE, all kinds of places. You're still very, very active in the ring. Yeah, I'm I'm on yeah, I'm pretty much wrestling every Friday, Saturday, Sunday and then I'm in a ring Monday through Thursday at the wrestling school. <laughs> I think I think I saw in February you wrestled like eight or it seems like eight or nine matches over the course of a week. I did 21 matches in 19 days. My god. What was what was that experience like? I I'm used to it. I I usually do 6 months out of the year uh uh back in the early 2000s in England over there. So I'm very much used to the double shots and uh, doing two shows a day over there and then traveling up and down the road. Uh, I mean, I enjoy it. If you love wrestling, what else can you ask for? I mean, you're doing what you love. It's, the only other thing I'm qualified to do is dig a ditch. So I'm never going to complain <laughs> if I'm doing two matches a day. You know what I mean? <laughs> so tell me some more about your wrestling school. Uh, how long have you been doing it? How did it come about? Okay. Well, it's uh, I've, I've run a few different wrestling schools. I, I, I ran Dean Malenko School. Uh, off of school um, throughout the years. And then I had my own wrestling school. Out, well, I was partners with uh, Rikishi and uh, his cousin, uh, the Black Pearl, in uh, California called Knox Pro. And that's where we trained uh, Rusev and a few of the other people. And I think Vanessa Bourne is still in NXT. Trained them there. Then I decided to move back home to Florida. And I really wasn't going to open up wrestling school. But, I mean, it's just the people were knocking Florida wrestling so bad. I said, well, instead of complaining about it or saying anything about it, try to do something about it. So I decided to go ahead and open a wrestling school here. So it's gang girls wrestling asylum and, uh, opened it up. Um, I opened it up a soft opening in October 31st cause I wanted the Halloween date, but, uh, technically it didn't, uh, start any of the beginners classes till December. So it's only been open a few months and, uh, it's doing real well. We had the local news covered here just last night on, on a segment being this wrestle WrestleMania week. Everybody's getting excited being at WrestleMania week, so <laughs> so we had that thing. So it's going really well. I, I, you know, it's on the right track, and uh, I'm very happy. Also, I mean, I think it sets a pretty good example that so deep into your career, you're wrestling so often. I mean, if if that's not a ringing endorsement for how to do it, how to do it safely, <laughs> and to uh, be out there every single weekend, it seems like my God. Yeah, it's all about those little things, the bumps and your form. You know, you. If you do that right, you could do it 30 years later like I am and still be talking smack, you know. I, I <laughs> like, Oh, um, li literally I, 30 years later. A lot of people don't realize this. You were on an episode of Wrestling Challenge against Big Boss Man in 1988. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was yeah, that, what was that experience like? Because I would imagine you were fairly new then. Well, you know, then, you know, as I got handcuffed to the pole, Big Boss Man beat me with a nightstick, and I thought – is this like the lowest point of my life or is this the highest point because it was <laughs> WWF, you know? So I had a lot of mixed emotions. And then I remember um, Slick pulling me to the side and uh, the big boss was manager at the time, Slick's there there. And uh, Slick said, hey, kid, I don't know what it is. He says, there's some magic in here, man. He says, I see something. He says, I know that you're going to be wrestling 20, 30 years from now and you're going to be doing just fine. He said, whatever you just, – just don't quit this and stick with it. There's something in you. And, like, and I don't know if it's those words that he told me that kept driving me or – or he saw something I didn't see or feel I had, but but it's 30 years later, and I'm ver still very blessed to be doing what I'm doing. <laughs> and maybe kind of in a, in a twist of irony, 10 years later, you're there, and Boss Man's there, too. And, yeah, and wrestled him many a times, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and tagged with him, you know, off and on, yeah. And in doing my research for this, I realized that just a couple months later, you're on TV again, and it's against Abdullah the Butcher. <laughs> it's All like, right, yeah. It's like, could, yeah, it, could um, it have gotten any more violent? <laughs> at that point right you know and i was pulling a fast one all of them back then because there's no no social media or, or, or anything like internet to stew jobs so i was like working for like wwf georgia championship wrestling florida championship wrestling um had already been to, uh, then i went to calgary went for calgary then i came back and was still doing those tvs and i was going to japan under a mask so i worked more back then <laughs> just breaking into the job you know i worked way more than i you know later on these these times here but uh yeah it was awesome but like there was no sheet there's only uh, dave Meltzer's sheet that would 
you could even figure out where everybody was working at. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you you had a run with WWF in 1994 too. Uh, I, I know you worked as the Black Phantom. What what happened there with that? Because uh, I know that you worked a lot of dates for them back then. Yeah, no, they flew me into like all the TVs, and I did a lot of house shows. I was never under a contract. They um they were always telling me, you know, to lose weight, throw my hair in. I had fangs bonded in permanently. They were like, you got to get rid of the fangs. Oh, man. <laughs> like, yeah. So so I lost the weight, threw the hair in, and then got rid of the fangs. And then it didn't give me a contract in 98. And they they, uh, they say, hey, can you do the vampire thing? Oh, and we're going to put a shirt on. We're going to put a shirt on you. Can you cut your hair? <laughs> I, I did everything they wanted except for cut the hair. I, like I said, no, man. You had me grow the hair back in. I kind of like it in now. I'm leaving the hair alone. <laughs> I'm sure you have yeah. to talk. I'm sure you have to talk about this one all the time, but you have the iconic entrance. I mean, who who first pitched yeah. that idea? When did you first hear about it? Well, well, they came to me on a Friday night, Vince Russo, and said, hey, can you still do the vampire thing? And it debuted on a Sunday night heat. So, <laughs> like, like uh, wow. so basically, like, it was, uh, like, a weekend thing. He he pretty much came up with the entrance. He was a big Kiss fan, and I like Kiss. So, like, he, he came up with the elevator and the fire, and I came up with, like, um, you know, Gene Simmons guitar solo where the blood comes out. I said, well, I'll just take a challenge and I'll spray blood up. So I'll play a tribute like that, you know, but all, most of that was like Vince Russo and the music uh, was, uh, what's his name? Jim Johnson. Right. So like yeah. he came up with that. Um, I mean, I heard him talking about it and all, but I'm still not so sure they didn't rip off like the, the, the toadies or uh, possibly the kingdom of that, but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the music's great. And, um, you know, now, like, there's such controversy around the name that it, it, it's so hard. But I, I, just recently, in the last couple of months since I opened the school, uh, I've actually acquired the federal trademark for, for Gangrel and all the licensing and stuff like that. So I've been able to come out with hot sauces and uh, coming out with an energy drink and, 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 and some other products pretty soon. So, so I, you know, it's funny how everything spins around, man. But I've just been very blessed. I just, you know, just, just everything's falling into place, and I'm just a very blessed guy. I, I was going to ask about that because I, I remember like on the video games and everything at the beginning, there would be a warning sc- or not a warning screen, a, a notice screen that says Gangrel appears courtesy of White Wolf. But but now you've acquired that. Right now I've acquired it like WWE kind of like just washed their hands of it because of all the drama like they had a, they had to lease it for five years. And when they uh, they leased it, when that lease was up, that's pretty much when they let me go and that lease was up on it. And then they brought me back to do a Monday Night Raw anniversary show and White Wolf sold to another company. Well, that company tried to sue WWE for like $5 million for that really? five-minute appearance. So, yeah, so Vince went, he says, I'm going to go to court. So Vince took it to court, and then uh, the judge pretty much, when he slammed the gavel, said, you know, nobody, the, the person that's been wrestling as gang girl, the character has the character rights. That's the case dismissed. So I had the character rights, but then it just recently, uh, the WWE, they didn't want to do it. They just washed their hands. I know when I did like Edge and Christian's, po- uh, not their podcast, but the ESC show they have on the, channel there they it said it took two weeks in legal just to agree to even let me do their show and they couldn't wow. say gangrel and they couldn't say this and they couldn't say that but but now now that's all under control because but wwe washed their hands of it so i don't know you know they never use me for anything now and I, it's pretty much because they just don't want that legal issues i guess but now i have it so i, I imagine if i spoke to the right people or i was in the right place at the right time can could make something happen. It's totally up to them, but I, I, it, it, it's all it's all cleared out now, so it's possible. <laughs> I had a question about sort of the legal surrounding all that because, and I mean, I don't even know if WWE knew, but I was watching an episode a couple years ago. You were on of Paragon Pro Wrestling, and right, right. Not only did, he, did they use Gangrel, they used your WWE theme. Was that did they use the music? Yeah, was yeah, or, did they, or did they use the rap version? Uh, I had a rap version that I that I have. Yeah, I think, I think they close. used the regular one. Uh, I could be wrong, though. I'd have to go back and look. Uh, but that, that was on the channel that is now known as Pop TV. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah, like – yeah. Because they used, they used Victoria's theme on there, too. And I was like, somebody's going to get in trouble for this. Oh, no, no. I, I don't know if they got any trouble. I mean, if they used that ring music, they, they probably could have. But, like, when you go through all the legal stuff, WWE, I don't even think, has the right to that when they let Jim Johnson go. I think I think they gave up all that stuff. I think he might have it, Jim Johnson or Universal yeah. or Disney or whoever whoever got it, but they might not even have it, uh, according to all the paperwork and stuff. They 
follow up on a lot of things. I think they're just going one direction with everything, and they're not really worried about a whole lot of the past anymore. <laughs> Jim Johnson revealed that he, he still gets a significant cut of the themes used uh, as it pertains to right. royalties. My God, I bet he's making a killing off of that. That's what I'm saying. I think he retained the stuff, and they gave it up maybe with something of that nature. I can't be 100% on that, but I don't understand. I didn't understand all the legal mumbo-jumbo, but – but I think it was something of that nature. So, so he's still doing all right, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. 